Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. For this video, we are tackling another heavily requested character that has been in the works for quite some time since last February. I know it's ridiculous, but planning dolls really take so long. Sunset Shimmer mainly appears in Equestria Girls, which is their human versions, but I used to refuse to watch it before because it might deter my own style and design choices for the other girls, but I knew I had to feel her vibe and character, and so I ended up watching it. And here I have laid out all of the elements and kind of the vibe that I want Sunset Shimmer to have. I drew lots of inspiration from her character, obviously. The blondes, a lot of guope, and I really just wanted to maintain her edgier punk style but still give it the fantasy spin-off. And so here is the concept art I created for Sunset Shimmer. This has been posted on my Instagram for quite some time so some of you guys already know that this is the final product and I wanted to put a lot of meaning into her look. I wanted her jacket to symbolize resistance from opening up and spikes like the rose's thorns keep people away from attempting to hurt her. Her dress represents the phoenix in her that is hidden away but in time will rise again from the ashes and crystallize ready for the runway. I wanted to give her thigh-high boost just to spice things up and the sides represents the flames trailing from her inner phoenix. I really love this concept and I believe it is a strong look for Sunset Shimmer. I'm gonna go ahead and quit rambling and so we can go ahead and work on this doll. For Sunset, I wanted to use Belle's head from Hasbro again, but I was so flabbergasted that they changed the head again and made it even smaller. This is a comparison of the old and the new Belle head. I don't know why they keep making the head so small, but I knew it was going to clash with my current MLP lineup, so I had to hunt down this older Belle doll from online. It was a mess, but I'm also using Apple White's body from Ever After High since she's going to be fully covered anyway. Since she's going to get new hair later, I'm gonna go ahead and take off all of her hair first. As usual, we're going to go ahead and prep her face by taking off the factory paint with acetone. I then prime and coat her face with MSC or Mr. Super Clear so we can have a fine surface to draw on. Using watercolor pencils, chalk pastels, and acrylic paint, I then start by sketching her new face. Try to be light-handed until you like the outline of the features you created. Using dark colors will be very very hard to erase. I wanted Sunset to have a slight smirk just to give her more character. I usually go for heavy expressions or a very aloof look. It just all depends on the doll head's mold. I'm gonna go ham on the eye makeup for this doll. I just wanted to have fun with color because I usually don't and I wanted her to have a more modern look than the other girl since she's from a different world. The key is repeating and layering to achieve maximum opacity. I love my colors very sharp and bright for the most part. I wanted her lips to retain the soft natural look but I still wanted it to have a color. Okay, I don't know if you guys are ready for this because I wasn't watching this very satisfying eyeliner. Ah, uh, I love it. And I actually gave her two wing liners, two cat eyes because why not? She needs to fly. She is a phoenix. <laughs> and I wanted to ombre her eyebrows as well. So it ombres from red to black. I'm taking my almost white beige pencil and I'm going to give the high points of her face the highlights that they deserve. And then I move on to my acrylic paints and I use this for her sclera, the catch lights, and also her teeth. And now it's time for the lashes! 
And then let's go ahead and finish it off with some gloss. And now we're done with her face. I'm really, really proud of how it turned out. I really love it. And finally, we can now move on to her outfit. So both Mystical Moonstones and Deluxe Designs on Instagram really helped me make my designs come to life. And I'm really, really thankful to both of them. So you guys should definitely check them out. Mystical Moonstone provided me with this amazing fabric for her bodysuit and it's so cool because it has gold reflexes. The downside is that it does stain some parts of the body, but hey, it looks good. <laughs> And then this amazing pleather jacket was made possible because of Deluxe Designs. I really wanted it to have some structure and oversized look, and I think she nailed it. The spikes I'm going to use I got from AliExpress and Born Pretty. They took so many months to arrive, which is the reason why this doll took so many months to make. But these are used for nail art, and they're actually very, very affordable. I just used super glue to glue it all over her collar and then also her sleeves. I did lose a few here and there which really really broke my heart because you know waiting for these took so long and wasting them was really just not a choice. <laughs> I used a total of 400 spikes for her collar and also the sleeves, more or less. But the finished product was so satisfying to look at and it was so worth it. And yes, sometimes it is very painful to touch. I wanted to make her a new belt because I wanted to be poseable. I'm taking this patent pleather and I'm gluing wire inside. I then added a buckle I made from a thicker wire that I painted gold to match and added grommets with paint. For the back, I sketched out her cutie mark and then I added my hot glue trick to imitate an embroidered look. I then layered multiple colors of acrylic paint to give it more dimension and then I topped it all off with glitter. Now this dress is made by Mystical Moonstone and it fits so amazing. I'm using the same gold fabric to create the feathers and I just cut out sharp thin triangles. I just glue it on one by one starting from the bottom and the sides. Overlapping is key to achieve the look that I'm trying to go for. The direction of the feathers is also very important, so make sure that if you guys try to recreate this that you are planning ahead. And then I finished it off with a bird shape I freehanded in the middle. And here we have our phoenix dress. It's so cool because the metallic fabric actually makes it look like it's almost armor too. For her boots, I cut out the bottom shape of her feet. I really really love pointed shoes just because I think it's more elegant. And I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it on her feet with hot glue so that it's easy to peel off later. I used the same fabric I used for her belt and cut two rectangular pieces to fit her legs and also her feet. I wrapped the good side on her and pinned it in place and then I sewed the bottom of her feet to her ankle and make sure it's just to her ankle. That way it will take the shape of the pointed toes that we wanted. I peel off the pleather and turn it inside out to show the good side and it should look really really good and pointed. <laughs> With a thicker pleather, I cut the sole again with the same exact shape and glued wire onto it so we can actually reshape it and mold it with the pitch on her feet. This will be her permanent sole that will go under her boots and I actually just use super glue for these ladder steps. Using a pin needle, I had it go through the heel to act as an armature for her main heel. You guys have seen me do this so many times. And then I drew an intricate flame shape to frame the heel and started gluing random shapes to imitate the stylized flames that goes all the way up her thighs. You can really have fun with this part and be as organic and as random as you'd like. I 
added a bit of hot glue to give it more texture and so that the pleather will remain flexible even after we paint it with acrylic paints. Then I took out my epoxy sculpt to create the actual heel. I just made a cone-like shape and I had it go through the needle heel that we had before and I tried to blend it in her actual sole part and after it's dried I secured it with super glue and then after that's dried I went ahead and sanded the entire heel to make it as pointy as I can make it. For the flames, using yellow as a base paint, I coated the design multiple times and started adding red and orange to the mix. This will prevent it from looking too flat and will actually make it come alive. I then coated the entire thing with gold metallic paint just to harmonize everything and to make it more vibrant. And of course, the red bottoms are back, 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 back again. It has been a while and I've missed it so much. And now we're done and it looks so cool and fierce. I would wear this myself. I'd actually wear the entire outfit myself. I mean, you know, I do design things that I would wear. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Going back to her head, I use red and yellow yarn for her hair and as you can see these are the three stages that I go through so I can achieve my yarn weft. And these are all of the wefts that I made. I made a few. Actually I made a lot. You can never have so much yarn wefts anyway. I started gluing down the blonde wefts in the bottom layer and the rest will be red. I really debated an all red hair with blonde streaks, but I didn't want her hair to be too busy since her outfit is the focal point of the entire look. I wanted her hair to complement the outfit and not go against it. I then gave her black roots just cause I thought it would look cool and would complement her entire color scheme. And then again, with the epoxy sculpt, I made her unicorn horn like how I did for Rarity and also Twilight. I started to give it a base paint with a close skin match and created gradiency with an orange tip. For some reason, the unicorn horn ended up looking like candy, and I'm not mad about it. And now it's time to put her all together. For a last minute detail, I wanted to give her long nails, so I just took doll packaging plastic and I cut really really tiny mini triangles and super glued it to her fingers and painted it gold. Previously on Hexgen's Rain Bam, but Rain Bam!
means that? Ah, curiouser and curiouser. She seems very familiar. Are we supposed to know her? Um, I guess you can say that. Let's just say she's from another world where things are topsy-turvy. What are you doing here? I was assigned by Princess Celestia to transport Rainbow Dash back to this world. I guess someone called Hexton caused a rift and disturbance here, and so I'm here to make things right for once. I just wanted to make sure she got here safe and sound. Wait, so the portal wasn't triggered by the sonic rain boom? Nope, but it did help me find you guys. Traveling through different dimensions can be confusing. Aww. So now where is Rainbow Blitz, darling? And by the way, and I must say, I love what you're wearing, darling. It's definitely scorching. <laughs> Thanks. That definitely means a lot coming from you. He's back to his own universe. Everything there is quite the opposite. Such an interesting sight, though. And you guys should definitely see yourselves there. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad we had this all sorted out. I gotta go. I gotta go help CA Cupid transfer from Monster High to Ever After High. And, um, yeah, but it was nice seeing you guys. What did she just say? Yeah, it's a long story.